Welcome to my craft room. Do you need more storage for your dies? These are some dies that I have from Carnation Crafts and they really inspired me to create this little fairy-like scene. We're going to use cardboard boxes that I got from the dollar store and this is some finished paper storage for my eight and a half by eleven paper. I used some cardboard boxes that I found at Dollar Tree to make these and I did co uh, cover the insides. I used um, acrylic paint to kind of distress the edges and we're going to be doing this project using again these recycled display boxes. We're actually going to be using that yellow one that says back to school and here's another picture of the finished product. All right, our first step is to cover those raw edges with the masking tape. I'm just using regular beige masking tape. The reason I'm covering the edges is because when I made my eight and a half by 11 paper storage in the larger size, I used acrylic paint to distress the edges and I didn't want the acrylic paint to be seeping in those raw edges of the cardboard and I just found that it's just going to give all the edges a uniform look because some of them have seams and some of them don't. I am using a little finger blade so of course be careful it's very sharp but um, covering these raw edges really goes fast. This is a very enjoyable project um, I've made about five of these boxes now um, and it, it really goes a lot faster than you think. So take your time, cover all the raw edges, all the corners, so anywhere there is a corner um, and you will see as we go on, I'm putting masking tape just to keep the overall aesthetics, design, and texture of our finished product all the same. When you're using your finger blade or any kind of a blade scissors, um, I'm just doing it really fast to get those edges down. You don't have to be that careful. And then if you use very light pressure um, to just cut that top layer off, you can get a nice corner and just put your little leftovers on the bottom because we're going to cover it up anyway so nobody's going to see it. It's okay to have fun doing this project and not worry about making it so perfect. If you don't want to use masking tape, I do show you um, in just a few minutes how to actually use paper um, to cut it and fold it and we'll make some score lines and you can use paper to cover your edges also.
Okay, we are almost done. And then we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to make a template. So if you're doing more than one box and you have the same size, you can make it much faster the second time around because you already have a template cut out. I'm just using leftover um, Cracker Box there from Cheez-It and I don't really care that there's a hole in it. We're going to cover it, but that's the template that I made. Um, I just traced when I was watching the playback here. It looks like I did lose some footage where I laid the box down on that piece of scrap um, gray board or um, like cereal box. I just used a permanent marker and marked how everything laid out. And then when I'm doing my actual cutting, you can see that I'm making it smaller because all of the marks on my template are the outer edges as I would trace it with a Sharpie. And the width of the Sharpie and the outside width of the cardboard box is going to make that template a little bit bigger than your actual size. Um, and this is one of those projects, again, you're going to have fun doing it and not worry about getting, you know, the measurements exact. So when you have um, your card down, you can see it's just a little bit too long. So now I am trimming it more to fit. And then I'm going to use a pen in a different color and retrace out on my template the smaller size. Now I do want this to stick and I happen to know that the coated paper on the Cheez-It box needs a little extra glue, not just your typical regular white craft glue. So I'm using that more construction grade adhesive. It will slide around. That's fine because you want it to really stick. All right. We're going to show you a quick and easy way to, instead of use the masking tape, just to make little templates to cover your raw edges. And you can use whatever scraps are laying around because you're probably going to paint over your paper anyways if you choose to, or you can ink over it and the color's not going to matter. So we're going to do the little corner piece. So on the scoreboard, my piece is just over an inch wide and I scored approximately in the middle on each line, which is about an eighth of an inch. And now I'm going to be cutting a fringe all the way up to the score mark. You don't want to go through the score mark, just up to the score mark and then turn it around and do the same thing on the other side up to the score mark. What this is going to allow you to do is actually bend the paper into more of a round shape to get in those corners. Um, think about making a circle box. You usually have some kind of a tab that has a little small pieces with notches cut in, and that allows you to shape that paper a little bit more. Um, I have that um, paper packs in there to hold the bottom down while it's drying. So you can see how you can shape that um, using your scoreboard. And it's about an eighth of an inch that I scored it. Um, cut those little fringe marks in and then glue it down on both sides. And now we're just going to make a little bit longer strip. Again, you would kind of use your template just as a rough estimate. I use some little score marks there um, on my scoreboard to cut it and you'll see how I lay it out. In this example, I use um, two little lines over, which is actually probably wider than it needs to be. Um, I could have done an eighth of an inch, but your cardboard may be wider or more narrow than mine, but um, just an eighth of an inch is plenty wide for the sides. And then you can see how that would just lay over top of that. It makes a nice little channel. And again, you would just glue it instead of using the masking tape. The process should be pretty fast. You can always trim your little edges to fit a little bit more. I would recommend doing the corners and edges first and then do your longer pieces because that'll kind of help um, 
hide any imperfections. All right, got it? There is my template. And you can see I'm looking through my paper stash. You're gonna choose papers that complement um, your craft room or your color scheme or your storage. Um, again, mine's a little fairy theme, so that's what I'm using. Those papers are from Michael's, uh, their big stack of paper stashes that you can usually buy for less than $7. I'm using the edge of my little scoring tool there just as a rough guide as I'm gonna cut that out with the paper trimmer and I am gonna mark some lines with a pin so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And because I need that insert to be smaller, I'm going to cut on the inside of that marked line and not the outside. And again, this is just an estimate. This is our first cut. Once you've got your template down, maybe you bought three or four boxes, your next box is going to go so much faster because you've already made one. You know the process, but it's pretty simple. And it's more important that you have fun doing it than to worry about if, you know, all of your lines are exactly square and straight. So I can tell that my insert piece is just a little bit too big. So I'm going to just trim it down with my paper trimmer and then I will trace that on my cardboard template that I made so I know what size it is and I know what you know closer to the exact size of paper that I need to cut out in the future and I'm going to do that for all my pieces all my insides all my outsides and get all of those basic cuts done I'm just using a thicker um, sheet of cardstock to keep my edge just a little bit straighter as I'm cutting that out and I'm just marking it Where is it? Oh. Okay, if you are using directional paper that has a definite print to it, you wanna keep in mind like tops and bottoms, left and rights, because if you flip things around upside down, front and backwards, you might wind up cutting out your design upside down backwards the wrong way around um, I've definitely done that mistake more than once okay we're going to be cutting that diagonal side piece out and I've laid my sheet of paper more inside the corner do you see how you can see the outside of the cardboard and I've marked with my left pointer finger kind of where I know the top edge of the corner is you see how I'm turning it around and the papers just staying in that corner and I'm just getting an approximate again okay so I know from the top of my finger all the way down straight that's going to be the bottom so I'm scoring that in I'm on a soft piece of like um, gray board backer board cardboard so my score tool is going in there and then I've got the mark that I made up at the top and I'm just attaching those two lines so I have just a basic straight line and now I'm gonna just score it bend it fold it really quick to see how close I got before I start actually cutting it out if you have more confidence than I do you can just go straight to the cutting but I wanted to make sure I had that fairly close All right, let's see how well I did. And this is not our pattern paper we're gonna use, this is just the template. That is pretty darn close for the first cut. So remember, use your pointy finger, hold that corner mark down and your marks will actually come out pretty straight. Okay, continuing, I used a corner rounder for the yellow part with the leaves because I know that that's going to go on the bottom and I'm just double checking all of my measurements now for some of the pieces that I've cut and seeing how close I got it. Um, I was going to use the yellow, I think, on the outside originally, 
Um, I'm going to show you how to join two pieces of cardstock together because I just wanted to use that same sheet of 12 by 12 paper and I was just a little smidgen short. So what I did is I joined up the two pieces. I used some washi tape. So how I joined those two together is I put the two pieces of cardstock, the one to kind of fill in for me, use the washi tape and some glue on the back, and then I just cut my template out of one piece of paper, and I think it worked out pretty good. My perfect piece with no cuts is going to go on the outside, and then I flipped it over that's like the opposite side with that little piece attached on the front, and I, and I think it looks fine. And then we'll use one of the other pieces on the inside. And don't forget to keep these all straight because as you can see, I'm trying to go, wait a minute, which one's inside out, frontwards, backwards, where am I putting these? So don't worry if you make that mistake on your second box, it's gonna turn out a lot better. And there's the bottom. I did the corner rounding, and what you're going to want to do is glue the inside sides first and make sure that you put a lot of goopy glue in there. You don't want a gap with your cardstock because when you go to do your edging treatment, you don't want all that glue and ink and anything else to be um, pushing those edges up. So do your best. Don't worry about the glue leaking out. You actually want that because your cardboard is not straight and level and perfect. So you do need that extra bit of goopy glue in there to help hold it down and to seal all those edges. And that'll keep it from peeling in the future. It's kind of like decoupaging, but you don't want to use a decoupage Mod Podge glue because that has a lot of water content in it, and the water content will soften your cardboard, um, kind of make your paper not so firm. And we want this to be nice and stiff and hard because you're gonna hold things in it like paper, which is really heavy, or your dies, and um, you really want those edges to adhere. You can use, you know, your flat score tool to kind of help hold it down if your edges are peeking up. I'm noticing on the bottom of mine that I've got some edges that weren't all the way to the edge. Um, I don't know if you've done any home improvement, but it's kind of like um, spackling holes. You want to really push that glue into any grooves or cracks. Um, that's like the best way I can describe it from when we did some home renos. Um, you get kind of your drywall or your plaster, or your liquid plaster, and you're really pushing it in there because you don't want to see that crack. So make sure that you do that on any edges that didn't quite get as gloopy as you had wanted. If you think something's too gloopy, you can use a little damp um, towel to wipe it off. You can see me there really pushing that glue up into the corner and then scraping it off with my little um, scraper tool and just have a little wet rag handy. Now, in the bottom, remember, we're gonna go really, really gloopy. And I'm realizing that I just glued the bottom and we need to not put it down on the paper. So I'm gonna grab a piece of plastic out of my waist and just put that on my um, tabletop so I can keep going. Now, the bottom is definitely more textured because it's got those flaps that are folding in there and my glue bottle's a little bit empty. <laughs> Don't be afraid to bang it around, it's not gonna care. And you're just going to really goop that glue in there because you don't, again, you don't want your um, bottom layer coming up with all of your dye storage in there. It's going to be moving, sliding back and forth. You want to get really good adhesion. Get your finger in there, smear it around. Don't worry, fingers clean, really easy, especially with glue, and I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue. It's got a great viscosity, a great thickness to it. 
if you're using any kind of like art glitter glue for this purpose, it has way too much water content in it and it'll really turn your paper into like this mu muddy mush. So use um, something thick, um, again, like an Aline's Tacky Glue for this project. And Aline's Tacky Glue is actually pretty cheap compared to some other glues that you hear a lot of people using. I am all about trying something new even if I've never done it before and I decided to pick up my metallic ink pad to see how well that would work on the corners. While I was initially very happy with it, I realized that it wasn't drying. I wound up with purple ink all over me and it really didn't dry till the next day. So I do recommend using acrylic paint and I just use like the small ones that come in those two inch bottle or two inch <laughs> two ounce bottles to do the project and I pretty much applied it with my finger and you'll see me do that in a little bit but you might want to use a brush um, even if you do use the paint in the little bottles because it's hard to get into those inside corners you'll realize that you don't need to do the bottom okay here's a sample of the two colors of acrylic paint that i used on the edges in my first project and the acrylic paint dried wonderfully it had great adhesion to the masking tape that's showing you what i was originally going to use and probably should have used i wound up realizing like i said that the uh, metallic um, ink pad was just it, it felt really almost oily and wasn't drying at all. So I wound up putting the green acrylic paint over the top of it and it surprisingly had good adhesion and about 24 hours later my purple was fairly dry but I'm still glad that I put the acrylic paint over it. So I hope that that tip helps you. Um, acrylic paint also comes off of your hands fairly easy but it won't come off of clothes, it won't come off of carpet. Um, so make sure you don't spill it on your floor. I've done that a time or two. And then um, you can always use a paintbrush to kind of fill in that little white edge that you see. Okay, there's the acrylic paint. I've just, you'll see me do it with my finger. Um, I found that, you know, the acrylic paints work pretty darn great for a lot of craft projects. And if this is not a design feature that you want to do, you absolutely don't have to do this. But um, either use the paper edge that we made in the sample to finish off your edges. You could also just use a regular dye ink pad because that will dry a lot faster. If you're applying it with um, the ink or like a stamp pad, you can use a blending brush if you're more comfortable doing that. Um, the little foam ones or even the kind that has bristles. I don't mind getting a little dirty and, you know, it's kind of fun to stick your finger in the tube of paint and just kind of go crazy. And your edge doesn't have to be that perfect anyways. And using your finger, um, you can feel along the edge of the paper and make sure that you're really um, pushing it into the edges. So if you thought about what you're going to do, do you know what size of box you need, um, what, what you're going to store in it? Because when you're in like the bargain store, like Dollar Tree or wherever you happen to be um, located. I know I have some UK viewers, so they might have like a pound shop, they call it there. You're just looking for cardboard boxes. Well, here we are. I've got the back done, and the dies and the designs that I'm using are from a UK based company called Carnation Crafts. I've been wanting something to keep these special dies in so they're easy to find. And I'm showing that I outlined her with a background layer, kind of a plain one, so she stands out of the background a little bit more. And then I just used a glitter marker that's also available at Dollar Tree. And now I'm just quickly adding all of the embellishments. 
your design, of course, is going to change based on what papers you have and your design aesthetic. You can just leave the sides plain. You don't have to do any more embellishment. If you're going to be pulling your box in and out of a shelf and something might be rubbing up next to it, that is something you want to think about because you don't want to be catching the edges um, constantly. But if you're going to be a little bit more careful with it or have it stand alone, it can have some dimension. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this craft project using something you can probably get for free <laughs> if you just look at your local store a little bit different. And hopefully I've inspired you to try something new, get some great storage ideas, because I know I like being able to see my storage. And if you decorate the back, you have the ability to turn it around and not have to look at your actual stuff but have that decoration. And then you can um, texture the edges, distress the edges in however way will fit your design aesthetic. So be inspired, get out there and craft. More importantly, enjoy what you're doing. Thanks for watching and spending some time with me.